Hey everybody, Atlas here again. So, My Glorious Justice came out, which means new Grand Blue stuff is abound, which means I have deck profiles for you. Grand Blue is a deck that I play in both Standard and Premium, because it was my first plan ever, and I have kind of a soft spot for it. So, how the deck works is your main win condition is you want to go into Medido, the Xeroth Dragon. Uh, who can make a huge board of four Stole Dragons that are attacking for usually over 60k each. And that's five attacks total, and then because you have something that can call something from drop during the battle phase, that's a total of seven attacks, all of which, except for one, are over 35k, which is pretty cool. Before we had trouble not dying because of things like OTT and uh, Neo Nectar going too fast, but... Now, thanks to Greed Shade, the card that came out, we can, uh, you know, speed our way to to the ultimate stride and have a consistent way to search everything you need out. So, let's get into it. Uh, your starter is the new one, the new draw starter, Captain Night Kid. Works better than Guiding Zombie. Use that instead. Four copies of uh, Master Swordsman Nightstorm. So, this is a new grade three we got. He's grade three with the Protect Gift, which is uh, important. Protect... Gifts are crazier in premium than they are in standard, in my opinion, because attacks are fucking gigantic in premium, and uh, having extra perfect guards is always a good thing. So he's a 12k, grade 3. On Vayner Rear, when you place him, you can mill two cards, and then he gets plus 5k for the turn. You're probably not going to use that skill later in the game, but it's good early when you're trying to set up your drop zone, because you can do that before you stride, or if you ride first, he's a 17, uh, 17k beater. The other skill is uh, on Vanner Rear at the end of the battle that he attacked a Vanguard. If you have 10 or more cards in drop, you can Counterblast one and draw a card. So, Counterblast in Grand Blue is pretty much free because of a card coming up later. So, this is a way to draw your cards if you happen to call him to rear for whatever reason. Most of the time, though, he's just a ride target for the Protect Gift and uh, something to get back with Greed Shade. Four copies of Stole Dragon. So, this is the more important Grade 3, even though it's not the Vanguard you want to be riding. He's grade 3 protect gift, so if you do ride him, it's not the end of the world. He can't be normal called, so you can't just call him from hand at rear guard circle, which means you have to call him from drop or somewhere else, or superior call him from hand. And then the other skill is he gets plus 2k for every card in your drop zone during your turn, so that is, is just, he's going to get big real fast. And then the other skill is at the end of the battle that he attacks, he retires himself. The important thing is that you want to get all four of these in drop zone, which you can now do so easily by first stride. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a great card, it's a definite four of. Um, this also means that most of your grade three lineup are double R's, which means that's a pretty easy uh, pretty easy to fulfill. So that's good. One copy of Ma uh, Mighty Road Nightstorm. So this is an 11k grade three with the Hollow ability. So if you don't, if, you know my newer players out there, Hollow is a keyword that. When a card is placed on, rear, on a rear guard circle, you can have it become hollowed if it has the hollow ability. And what the hollow ability does is it's a state, and then if it's uh, hollowed at the end phase, it retires itself. His other skills are GB1 on rear at the end of the battle that he attacks. If he's hollowed, counterblast one, call something from drop to the circle he is not on. So if he's on the left, you gotta call something over here afterward. You can't be like, I'm gonna call it here. Not possible. The other skill is when you ride him, you can counter blast, soul blast, check top five for someone with a hollow ability, add it to hand. You're never going to use this skill, A, because, like, the amount of filtering you do, even in the early game, is bedongous. I have never had to ride this since adding the new new stuff in. Statistically, it's going to happen at some point, but even if you have to ride him, he's not that bad of a ride, because there are a couple of cards in here with hollow. So, that's not terrible. But yeah, super good rear guard because it uh, works with your win condition. Four copies of Greed Shade. So this is the fucking MVP of the deck right here. One of them is SP. So he's grade 2, 9k. She? Is it her girl? I don't know. Anyway, um, so on Van or rear, when it attacks Vanguard, if, it, if you have 10 or more cards in drop, plus 5k. Pretty straightforward. The other and more important skill is when you place it on rear from anywhere, you can discard a card and then mill two cards and then a card from your drop zone to your hand. So that means that any card in your hand basically be cards in, becomes any card in your drop zone. When they say, oh, the drop zone's like a second hand, it is literally the case here. This means you can get heals for G-guards. You can pull PGs back to your hand if you're not, you know, riding for protect gifts. You can uh, get the cost for ultimate stride. You can get, like, just 
rough sea banshee that got milled and then shove it in sulfur draw. The possibilities are nearly endless. Love this thing. This should have been the VR. <laughs> what? Master Raid was a VR. Get over it. All right. Two copies of uh, Columbard. So this is the Amber clone from back in the day. GB1, when it attacks a Vanguard, while it's boosted, you counterblast one caller card from drops into rear. Uh, pretty straightforward. Like I said, counterblast is basically free in this deck, so this is very spammable. You, you, you make these crazy fields where you have, like, Big Thing and Columbard, and then you'll be like, all right, attack with Big Thing, attack with Columbard, call it over here. And calling over your stuff in Grand Blue doesn't matter because it goes right back where you came from. And as well, you can do other wacky shit, like if you have... Uh, Let's say you have, like, you have one on field, one in drop, and you attack with, like, your thing over here, and you, you leave the booster unused, and then attack with Columbard, and then you call the second Columbard here, and then you attack with this Columbard, and then you call something on top of this Columbard. So, like, you're multi-attacking in Grand Blue without Excel Circles, which is pretty cool. Uh, two copies of Stilton Cannoneer, so card with the Hollow ability, that's something. And then GB1, Counterblast 1, when placed from drop, you can, uh... Retire an opponent's rear guard, and then if he's hollowed, when you do this, you draw a card. So it's either a wash or a plus one. Actually, no, it's just a plus one either way, because if it's not hollowed, he stays. But yeah, this is great for retire it in uh, a deck that shouldn't really be retiring. The good thing is, because the way the deck works, you can be as techy as you want. And that means that if you want to run a second card that either I'm missing, or more copies of something like Columbard or other cards coming up, you can drop a Cannoneer and it's fine. Running one copy of things in this deck does not matter, so good for this dude. All right, one copy of Captain Nightmist. So when placed, you counterblast one, you call a grade one or less from drop. I think there's just one. Yeah, one or less. And then if you have ten or more cards in drop and you do this still, you can call anything. So this is just a way to extend your uh, calling if it's early in the game. Most of your strides uh, get a number of cards from drop uh, in accordance to the stuff in your G-Zone. So if you're first striding and you don't really have, you know, like a way to make a board, but you still want to make a board and you have enough cards and drop, this can just extend your your field. And like I said, Counterblast is free, so good for him. One copy of King Serpent, one place from drop, Counter Charge, Soul Charge. This is just a way to extend, you know, use your, an easier way to make use of your Counterblast because although it is free, you only get refunded at the end of your turn. So yeah, good way to just extend combos, otherwise he's just like a discard fodder for Greed Shade or something. Uh, one copy of the new Stormride Ghost Ship, so the boats, uh, he can't be normal called and you can't call it to guard circle either. So if you have it in hand, the only way to get it out of there is to discard it for something, either a PG or Greed Shade or something like that. The other skill is that when it attacks a Vander, is it Vander or anything? Attacks anything. He gets plus 15k for the battle. It it gets plus 15k for the battle, and then at the end of the battle, it retires itself, and you draw a card. So this means that, unlike Skull Dragon, which uh, gets pretty huge, but doesn't refund itself and it kills itself, this does! So, if you called a bunch of free shit off of a Stride, or maybe a Captain Nightmist or something, this allows you to A, put pressure and hit Force Vanguards on its own, even after a uh, trigger on damage, and you get a draw when it retires itself. So yeah, this really comes in handy in the mid-game. You don't really need more than one, though, because it's, like, like I said, you just, you go through your deck so quick. Four copies of, so, on rear, if you have ten or more cards in drop, he gets plus 4k during your turn, so he's 12k. Cool. The important still is that when you ride on top of him, you can counterblast one, put a card from your hand to your soul, mill three, and then put a card from your drop zone into your hand. So this allows you to kind of kickstart your drop zone, and it's a great first ride. So, yeah, he, he's a really good dude, and then after that, he's just a 10k shield and a 12k booster. So, good stuff. Two copies of Stride Fodder, because 9 grade 3s, but uh, most of the time you're going to be milling your Skull Dragons off of effects, so this is just a way to pad it. Yeah, and then even, it also made that still seems like a low number for Stride cost, but guess what? You can get the grade 3s back to your hand with Great Shade, so it doesn't even matter. Alright, uh, one copy of Dancing Cutlass. This is the old version of Dancing Cutlass. It's the 5k, see that? So, which is... When placed, you soul last two draw a card. Um, you sometimes fill up your soul really quickly due to things like King Serpent and Rough Sea Banshee and the the premium collection crit trigger. So this allows you to just empty it out, um, get some cards for your trouble. Maybe you, like put something in there with Romario still that you want and drop. So that's nice. The other thing is two copies of the new Cutlass. 
They look rather similar, don't they? So New Cutlass is still a 6K, and then while it's in Drop Zone, you can bind a copy of Dancing Cutlass to call itself from Drop Zone and Counter Charge 1. So this allows you to get Counter Charge before you start attacking, um, for what, you know, if you need it for whatever reason. It also means that because it just asks for Dancing Cutlass, you can bind this Cutlass for cost. So flexibility, always good. Um, and then I just ran, you know, the other copy just for consistency, so yay. One copy of uh, Ripple Banshee. So uh, one place from drop, you can Soul Blast one draw card, she gets 4k for the turn. This is basically like just a less flexible, higher power uh, Dancing Cutlass. And is a 10k shield, and also gets 4k when you do it, so if you put her behind um, the Nightstorm Hollow guy, that's a 23 column, which is good. Um, yeah, you only need it as a one of, uh, it's a really solid card. Moving on. Two copies of Dolph the Ghosty. So this is the new PG that we got in the set. And ev every clan is getting this, so it's like any normal PG. But the other skill is that when you ride it, you draw a card and you discard a card. So that combined with Captain Night Kid means you're drawing two cards and then discarding one. What that also means is that this is literally the only clan where that is... Like, not just decent, it's a great effect, because you're Grand Blue. Like, you want to be drawing and discarding. Um, I also... The reason I run, run them at 2 and not just do 4 and run 12 crit is because I kind of couldn't find the room. You are also welcome to, if you'd like, you can cut out the these two cut lists, the new ones, for two more copies of this. Um, and then just... You know, like it's one less way to counter charge, but I find the ability to counter charge outside of the upcoming card after this is still kind of important, so that's why I have it as two of. But yeah, dope ass card. Hooray for him, plus he, he's, he's derpy looking. Alright, one copy of Undying Departed Grash. I've been making reference to this the whole video. Uh, so it's a starter with Forerunner, which does not matter because you will always be using Night Kid as your starter. And then he's got the Hollow ability, and then at the end of the turn, if he retires due to the Hollow ability, you counter charge two. Which means that every skill that calls cards, this is probably going to be a part of, because you just refund your counter blast from the whole turn, every turn. This is all, the reason you're also running it in deck is because you can just search it with one of the strides and put it in drop zone. Bam, there you go. For triggers, you got four heals for the V heals. Um, so I used to have the counter charge soul charge heals, uh, but I took those out because sometimes you want the 10k shield, or the 10k extra shield for 20k. So yeah, it any deck that doesn't have, or that doesn't have a counter blast problem, and is just doing it to be greedy, you gotta be running four of the V heals. Also, you'd probably save your budget that way. In, in something like Pale Moon, I was keeping it as a 2-2 of just because it, it runs out of Counter Blast so quickly, but this, you just everything's free. So, hooray. Um, four of the Premium Collection heals. Hi there, Atlas here. Uh, so, there are several times in this video where I say heals when I mean crits. And this is one of those times. If you are any deck in premium, you are running this. <laughs> because it's all the same. GB1, when Vanguard attacks, shove and soul. Vanguard gets 10k draw a card. So, good way to get uh, cards in your soul. You can also soul blast them out, call them back, and do that shit again. So, yeah. Great card. I also have four more copies of just the V-Heals. See what I mean? I'm incorrigible. And I did, like, two Rough Sea and one of Night Spirit and... Uh, moral Mimic, just to fuck with people, because uh, that's how I roll, I guess. And then lastly, two copies of the old Rough Seas Banshee. So, yeah, that's also Rough Seas Banshee, but this is the old one, so you can still run it on a deck list. Anyway, old Rough Seas Banshee is, you know, a crit trigger, and then when she's on rear, you can put her in soul and draw, draw cards. So this is great if you draw in the early game just to dig for stuff. Um, like I said, it's also something you can Soul Blast, call back out, and do it again. I had it at 4 of before, but you don't really need it all that much because you go through your deck so fast anyway, so... Yeah, uh, she's not as needed anymore, but she's always good, so 2 of. And lastly, 2 draw PG, because uh, the other two, Dolph the Ghosty, uh, are not for PGs, and this is. Uh, most of the time, you're not, like, in standard, you've got to worry about deck out. In premium, the game goes so fast that it's not really that much of an issue. 
if for whatever reason you want to cut out to Dolph, Dolph the Dosti for other stuff, you can cut these down and... Or you cut out two crits and run four draw PG, but I don't really recommend it just because that Dolph effect is so good. I have my Protect Gifts, which uh, if you follow uh, the Nexus at Night Twitter, our podcast, I tweeted this out a couple... or I don't know how long it's going to be before this is uploaded. So there's my Protect 1 gift. There's my Protect 2 gift. All in clear sleeves. I recommend you do this with, like, everything. I took the... I took... I did this with Excel gifts at... Uh, Shop challenge for premium, and the judge said it was okay. So, I think this is pretty dope, and I think Bushiroad should really ought to consider printing double-sided gifts like they did with Impact Monsters. I don't know. Think about it. G Zone. Uh, we have one copy of Ghosty Great Emperor Big Obadiah. So, Boo lost this. If anybody remembers Luigi's Mansion. So, act once per turn. You counterblast. Turn a card in G Zone face up. Search your deck for up to five cards. Any of them. So that's why it's so techy, is because you can just search whatever the fuck you want. Put them in drop zone, and then you choose two cards for every card face up in G zone. Call them to rear, and they get plus 5k for the turn. Um, so this is literally always your first stride, unless for some reason your soul is huge, in which case you go gouch. I only have this as a one of because after that, you can just kind of pressure with anything else because you've already kind of searched out your whole everything you want to call ever and put it in drop zone. So. Yeah, he's an amazing first stride. I, I didn't really think he was that good when I first saw him, but, like, in practice, it's amazing. Um, one copy of Seabreeze, because this can be literally anything. Run a second Obadiah if you want. I just ran it for that hyper-specific scenario, but most of the time he's just the flip target. Two copies of Gauche. So, uh, when you stride him, counterblast, soul blast, turn a copy of him face up, choose any number of cards in your soul. So after you pay the cost, so you go counterblast, soul blast, then look at the cards in your soul. Put any number of those in a drop, and then call the same number of cards in drop zone to rear, and they get plus 1k for every copy of Gaush and Jizen. You're not really going to use this all that much. I mostly just use them for, um, like, if I had a bunch of rough seas to begin with, and, you know, I rode Romario, and I have, like, a soul of five, because then you can just make a whole board, whereas Obadiah first stride can only do two. Um, but yeah, he, he's still a pretty solid first stride, just not quite as much as it used to be. Four copies of Rosal Night Rose. So, this is your mid game stride. Once per turn, counter blast one, turn a copy of her face up. Choose a number of cards in your drop zone equal to the cards in your G zone plus one. So, when you if you do her first stride, you call two, etc. And then call them to rear as hollowed, so even if they don't have the hollow ability, they will die at the end phase. And then if you call three or more cards, Rosal here gets a crit. So, this is just easy crit pressure. It's also pretty free, because, like, you're always going to be doing your second stride in later, which means that you're doing, like, whack it do Like, all right, I'm attacking for 37, because I called that, you know, the crit back, and then it has, and she's attacking with a crit, and then I'm doing, like, wacky shenanigans with multi-attacks. If you want to run more Obadiah and run, like, a tackier lineup for stuff, I would, you could just cut to Rosal and then add more Obadiah to compensate. So, that's cool. One copy each of the Progenitor and Xeroth Dragons. I don't really uh, use the Progenitor Dragon much, but it's a thing you can do. So the skill is you gotta, you know, same cost as your Vanguard, which is rather easy to do because Great Shade. And then if it's face up in G Zone, you can strike for free, but it can't be turned face up by other stuff. And then the other skill is uh, w when the opponent puts down a Guardian, you can discard a card and uh, retire that Guardian. So it doesn't negate PG's... Can it do G-Guards? Yeah, it can do G-Guards. Uh, so it's either PG or as many cards in your hand, you can keep blowing stuff up and making them waste more cards. And then the uh, Xeroth Dragon is Counterblast 2, you know, Ultimate Stride, same cost as your Vanguard, 3 face up. Counterblast 2, choose up to 5 cards from hand or drop, call them to rear. They all get 5k, and then the skill at the end of the battle, you can swap two rear guards. So what you want to do is have a field of four Skull Dragons and then the Night Rose uh, Hollow guy. So then you're attacking for these crazy numbers that are going back and forth, and then this usually, and this kills like 95% of the time. So yeah, both pretty solid cards. There's also the Boat, GB8. Probably not going to go into this very much. Flip it with uh, Obadiah for all I care. So GB8, when it's placed on Van, choose five cards from drop, call them to separate rear, they get 10k, and at the end of the turn, retire the units called. So free field, and it's huge, and then it dies. Fine, I guess. Uh, G-guards, you have... 
Corpse Dragon. So when you guard with him, you can mill two, he gets 5k shield. It's an early one, it's pretty fine, it's good. Negronora, so GB1, uh, flip a card face up in G-Zone. After you do that, call two things from drop of different grades. So you just call the heal, call a grade one, that's 30k extra shield, big, good stuff. Or call a PG and use the PG. Negra mode, Soul Blast, it's 5k for every five cards in your soul up to 15. So, good for emptying out your soul and all that good stuff. Can you tell I'm racing against the battery here? Uh, and then the Nedra Lily. So, Counter Blast 1, retire one of your rear guards. Uh, she gets 10k shield, and then you can call a normal unit Ghosty back from drop. It's fine, I guess. I don't use her that much. And then lastly, Ractomi for the drop and draw. So, I think the deck's pretty awesome. I still have yet to test it all that much, but uh, so far it's been doing pretty well. And uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.